Hello, my name is Kent Philpott. I live in Mill Valley, California. And this is in the second in a series of videos uh, on Santeria. Its rites, its rituals, its worldview. I published, um, as I said, a first series. And I got quite a, a lot of response, a lot more than I anticipated. And uh, some uh, people uh, liked it. Most people didn't. Uh, they had some challenges and criticisms. And so what I did was I started working a little harder on it. I wanted to uh, become much more skilled in my understanding of what Santa Maria is. Extraordinarily complicated. Uh, I enjoyed actually uh, working on the material. And so I thought I would uh, prepare a second series. I'm not sure how long it's going to be. Um, I prepared a paper on it, an essay, about 24 pages long, and I'm simply going to read through it, talk through it. But I want to show you some of the work books that I consulted for this. Um, Santeria, The Beliefs and Rituals of a Growing Religion in America by Miguel A. De La Torre. I don't know if I can get that on there. There you go. That's one book I worked with. Uh, Robert Smith's Kingdoms of, of uh, the Yoruba, and uh, that's more of an anthropological look, cultural anthropological look at it. Uh, here is my favorite one, actually, Raul Canizares, uh, called Cuban Santeria, Walking with the Night, and a very interesting book, and the one that helped me the most. Uh, here is The Good, the Bad, and the Beautiful by Barry... Halen, uh, something else, a uh, cultural anthropological look about uh, Yoruba and the West African religion. Um, and then uh, my Jean Gonzalez Whippler, I find that many people didn't like her. I don't know why, but um, I thought it was a very helpful uh, and useful book. Joseph M. Mur Murphy's book, just titled Santa Rhea. Uh, African Spirits in America, uh, again, a very helpful book. And then by an uh, A.B. Ellis, Yoruba-speaking peoples, more of a sociological, cultural, anthropological uh, look at Santa Maria. So that's what I've been working with. And it's not been a simple study because I had to read each one and outline each book and try to put the pieces together and take a look at it from my Christian worldview. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm the pastor of a Baptist church in Mill Valley, California. I've been a pastor for over 40 years. And I titled this, this essay, and this is going to upset some people, but I titled it From Slavery to Slavery. To slavery to Slavery. And because, you know what, the, the Yoruba pe uh, people came uh, over to the New World because they were taken as slaves and they were sold in the New World. That horrible uh, event that eventually was closed down. And uh, it, it was a, a very abject, terrible slavery. Many died. And so we had these West African people, they had a long established tradition, the, uh, the Yoruba religion, which from which Santa Maria comes. Some say go back to Egypt, Rome, Greece, um, medieval Europe, at least a thousand years ago. Uh, and some say, of course, a lot longer. But uh, the, the belief system and the Orishas and the various dynamics of Santa Maria, uh, as stemming from the West African religions, is quite ancient. And so, from slavery to slavery, they, uh, they brought their religious beliefs over. And uh, when, they, when, when they came to the New World, they worked on the tobacco and the sugar plantations. And they had their religious beliefs, but already in place was the dominant world religion of the Roman Catholic Church. And it's called Iberian or Spanish uh, Catholicism. And... It, in a way, it was something that uh, the, there was a clash 
And uh, I read accounts where some slaves in chains were baptized, and they really didn't understand the doctrine. They were just ushered into uh, Roman Catholic uh, views, and uh, so it was that they, it was of necessity, they pretty much had to hide what they were doing, but they found in the Roman Catholic Church a perfect place to mask uh, the African deities. And I want to talk just a little bit about the African deities, a little bit of a history. Um, the religion probably would be best be termed animism. Uh, it's the oldest and more people are animist in their religious beliefs than in any other religion. It is the oldest and the most popular. It exists, has existed all over the world. It, um, it has to do with the spirits inhabiting the earth. Uh, it might be termed panentheism. Uh, pantheism is God is everything, but panentheism is God is in everything. For example, spirits in the rocks, the plants, the streams, the animals, the mountains, the valleys. Indeed, all that is natural has spirit in it. And they can be appealed to. They can be propitiated. That means sacrifices can be made. They can be placated. They can be pleased in order to get them to do what you want them to do. You need the rain. Uh, you need the various elements uh, to work for you, to survive. And so, because they believed in all of these natural earth elements and phenomenon were inhabited by spirits that you could communicate with and that you could manipulate. And so, that formed the backdrop for the African Yoruba uh, religions. And they were brought over uh, to the New World. And uh, uh, Santeria means really essentially having to do with the saints, uh, stuff about those saints. Santeria adopted the Spanish language, of course, and found in the Roman Catholic Church the perfect, perfect place. Uh, the, the West African chief god was uh, named Olodumare. Sometimes I mispronounce words, uh, but I do the best I can. That's the god usually given to the one su uh, supreme god of Santeria, uh, uh, Ola, Ola Dumari is almighty and the source of life. All things are said to come from him, and to him all things are to return. So in a way, it, it's sort of like a combination of monotheism. Uh, Ola Dumari, uh, the history of where that came from is very difficult to know. Uh, maybe it, they borrowed from the missionaries that came into Africa, or it just filtered down uh, from the north uh, as Christianity grew and knowledge of the Bible grew and so on. Because there are some characteristics that I've seen that remind me of a biblical view of God. On the other hand, um, it's, it's sort of like monism that it, it's one supreme being who is all. Now there is the ashy, A-S-H-E with an accent on the E, and ashy is said to be the supreme thing, or that this is the energy force that Olodumare gives off, and it gets a little complicated. I found some conflicting statements about this, which is really ultimate. Olodumare, or ashy, the, the power that he puts off, but they kind of combine in a way, and it, it's sort of a crossover between monotheism and monism. And I, I land it with animistic kind of panentheism, spirits in things. Um, the, the God system is a very complicated one, but uh, Olu Dumari is said to be incarnated into the world through Ashi, which is a creative force, an energy or power that may be obtained by worship, and sacrifices to the Orishas. These are the demigods. The uh, well, the the Orishas are the key to the thing. They're the ones that have the Ashi and become the gods and goddesses 
of Sanaria, and are worshipped by and sacrificed to, so that the ashy, this power, can be obtained. All right, this is going to be all for the first video.